So by this point, we all know just how amazing this iPhone is, but there's a bunch of settings and features that Apple really never mentions that not only make it more fun to use, but more importantly, actually improve your day-to-day -day experience with your iPhone. So in this video, we're gonna talk about 15 different settings and features that not a lot of people know about that need to either be changed or modified, so you guys are fully aware of them moving forward. These will all be features and settings native to the iPhone, so nothing to install, nothing to buy, just improvements to your day-to-day -day on your iPhone. Without further ado, Let's talk about it. But now, if you do enjoy videos like this where we talk about all things Apple, software, and hardware, consider subscribing to the channel because we have a lot more like these coming down the pipeline, like one for my beloved iPad as well. But now let's talk about the first feature. Well, all right, let's get started with this one. And for reference sake, I am using an iPhone 17 Pro as well as the latest version of iOS 26.2, but most of these will work with any iPhone with some of the latest software updates. But the first one I wanna bring up is going to be in our settings. So we've known how to copy and paste things for years now at this point, but one of the annoying things about copy and pasting is that for instance, if I'm trying to copy this and send it over to somebody or add it to my notes or something like that, it'll actually hold on to the format. So you can see that there's a link in here. If I go over here, tap and just press paste, it'll show up with that link right there. Now there's a couple ways to get rid of this. For instance, in the notes application, if I just long press on this link, I'll get a menu and I can just press remove link and that's no longer there anymore, which is great to see. And then I can, you know, format however I see fit with all the formatting tools that I see here. Another way to do this is if I go into my mail application, for instance, I can go into the mail. Maybe I want to send this to somebody without the link. I tap on here. Instead of placing the paste button, I move over. I do paste and match style, allow the paste, and then it's going to save that and send it the way that I want it to without any formatting as well. So I love to be able to remove things when I don't need them. And that's a nice little fix and a nice little workaround. And also be on the lookout whenever you are, for instance, in different sections of the UI. If I go in here, you might have a different paste option. So if I maybe want to paste that entire piece that I had over here, I can either paste or press paste and go. Paste and go will either go to the URL that's in there or it'll just paste that entire thing into Google and then you can see that it's there. So overall, just be on the lookout for some different paste formattings moving forward because it's a lot easier to use that way. Another big one, which is a pet peeve of mine sometimes is going to be the volume rocker. So the volume rocker, if I move it up and down, this is actually going to change the ringer as well as the media volume coming out. But what if, for instance, I just want to change the ringer volume? What if I don't want to actually mute it by going in here and pressing my mute button or maybe using the action button on the left hand side? What if I just want to control the volume button and control either the ringer or the volume of whatever media is playing? There's a fix in the settings. So if I go into settings, go down to where it says sound and haptics, you have the ability to have this toggle turned off and on. Right now it's turned off for me where it says change with buttons. If I tap on here, that means the volume rocker will also change the volume of the ringer. If I tap this off, it'll actually only change the volume of my media. So as somebody who uses more media than the ringer themselves, being able to have the ringer at whatever volume I want right here, or being able to control the volume of the media that I'm playing, is a big feature or quality of life improvement that I've been wanting to have. Another big one that I've noticed is that people have different variations of how they take incoming calls. For instance, there's two real options to decide how incoming calls are gonna show up on your phone. The first one is going to be with the drop down. So if you have a drop down coming up, that means it's gonna show off no matter what's happening on your screen, but it'll still allow you to do whatever you need to on the screen while it's happening. The second version is where it takes up the entire screen, so it's a big alert saying, hey, you need to actually answer this or decline it before doing whatever else you're doing on your phone. And there's one way to change that. I, for one, like it one certain way, but if we go down to our settings, go into our apps, I'm not a big fan of how Apple does this now, but go into the phone application and go into incoming calls and tap in here. You can have the banner or the full screen. So banner, like I mentioned, shows up as a little drop down, almost like a notification here. And the full screen will take up the entire piece. And this will apply for all things where it's phone, FaceTime, or other apps that used to receive calls like a WhatsApp or a Telegram or something like that. And then you also have the ability to announce calls. So that's something that you guys can take into consideration. But it'll show up in your headphones, your headphones in your car, or always will it will dictate with voice saying like, hey, you're getting a phone call with the speakers actually playing out loud or in your headphones. I like to keep that turned off because I'm not a big fan of that, but now the more you know. Okay, so another one is gonna be in the camera application, and this is gonna to have to do with macro mode. So you guys might be aware that you have this little flower right here to disable and enable macro mode. And sometimes depending on what situation you're in, sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't want it. And it just kind of gets annoying. So you can actually take control of macro very easily. All you have to do is go into your camera settings. So if we go into our settings, let's go back to our camera, go into macro control. And if you turn this off, then that little flower icon will no longer appear. So if I go in here, it'll actually just do it by default. So if I go, it'll just go into macro mode on its own. If I go away, it'll actually get 
out of that situation. But if you want that manual control, you go into macro control, tap that on, and then you will get that little flower where you can manually turn it off and on however you see fit. Like there's a lot of instances nowadays where I am very close and I want to turn macro on, or I just hit the ultra wide lens and then get as close as I want as well to get a little bit of a better shot in my opinion. But that's just one way to take control of macro mode. And then another fun one, or at least two other fun ones here in the camera settings. One is going to be the lens cleaning hint. So if there is a smudge on the rear, if there's a physical obstruction on the actual camera lens itself, it'll let you know like, hey, clean it off because you're getting a smudgy picture. Because again, for some reason, my parents have almost the latest iPhones up thinking of the 15 or the 16, and they still have very smudgy pictures because they have fog or something covering up the physical camera lens. But now you'll get an alert on your phone if you have that turned on. And then also the lock screen swipe to open camera. If you have a modern iPhone, using the camera control button, just tapping it will take you to the camera. So in my opinion, it's a little redundant to have not only that one, but then also, as you can see here, I actually remove my camera shortcut here and remove the ability to swipe over to access the camera because I have my shortcut already, which is gonna be my camera control button. And that's literally the only way that I use my camera control button. So another one that people either loved or they hated with the update to iOS 26 is going to be the screen capture UI. So if you take a screen grab right now, if you guys remember, iOS 18 did not look anything like this. For instance, you have a bunch of new options in your screen grab software. So you have the ability to X out, you can mark it up, you can share it, you can you know check it off and add it to whatever file you want to. But then you also have all the you know AI and the Apple intelligence of it all. So you can search, you can circle to search, you can ask ChatGPT or ask Siri for any information that's on the screen. And some people think this is too much, this is too confusing, and it's annoying to deal with. The good news is that you can actually change this and go back to the normal way. So all you do is you go into your settings, go into general, Go into screen capture, and then you have the full screen preview. So display screenshots in full view instead of showing a temporary thumbnail in the lower left hand corner. I'm gonna hit this one, and now if I take a screenshot, it's back to normal. So that's exactly how it was. And I can, you still have this UI here, but at least now if I do take this screenshot, I can just swipe it off to the side because I know that I only need the screenshot and I don't need all that extra stuff. Now, again, if you do want it back, you just turn this on and it'll be good to go. And then you can also turn on automatic visual lookup, which is those pieces on the bottom that we showed before. So the more you know. Now, I know that I just mentioned that with the modern iPhones, you have the camera control button. And for me, the only way that I use it is as a shortcut to launch my camera whenever I am needing to launch the camera. But some people don't like this and some people actually don't like camera control whatsoever. So there's a couple things you can do here. So if we go into our settings, go into the camera, go into camera control, you have a few options here. So for instance, you can actually launch the camera or launch something else like a QR code scanner, Instagram, Magnify, or you just completely turn it off. So if I turn it off and I hit the camera control, literally nothing's gonna happen. You can see that the screen actually reacts down there a little bit, but nothing is happening because I turned it off. So if I go back to camera, click it, now I'm going back into the camera application. But you also have the ability to single click and double click. Choose a gesture to open the camera app so I can single click it or double click it. And you can also customize the camera adjustment. So if I completely turn it off and I go back to my camera, this doesn't do anything anymore. The, the swipe to control anything is gone. The focus is gone. You still feel a little bit of a haptic feedback when you are light pressing it, but you can turn off all the features that come with it because I know a lot of people just aren't a fan of it. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple eventually just gets rid of this completely because camera control, in my opinion, kind of a flop. You know, aside from it being a quick access control trigger for my camera application, I have zero other use for it. And if anything, it makes me auto focus and lock in by accident whenever I am using it. But to each their own, you can customize it however you see fit. And that's something that a lot of people just don't, aren't aware of. A couple other camera tricks that I've noticed over the years that, again, people just aren't aware of is no matter what iPhone you have, whether you have that camera control button or not, the first thing I want to bring up is that you can actually record and the first thing I'm gonna bring up is that you can actually record directly from this screen. So you don't need to swipe over to video to get into a video motion, but if you just go here, long press, and then swipe to the right, it's gonna start recording wherever you see fit or recording your surroundings or your area or whatever the case may be. So it's good to know that you can do that. And you can also pause the recording. So if I pause the recording, I'm still in this recording situation, but it's paused. This, what's happening right now is not being recorded. And if I wanna continue, I just press that button again, it's continuing, and then I stop the actual recording you can see that it is recording and then there should be a little stop in the middle of it because I did stop it. As you can see, it did stop, it changed, it shifted, and then it's back to the recording studio. But again, always great to know. And then another fun one in the camera application as well is, again, if you long press, you are recording, but again, you're recording now in portrait orientation. 
which is again maybe something that you don't want to do and then you see yourself turn over maybe it's a situation where you're at a concert or in the moment this is the one that you have to go with and it's not going to auto rotate for you in the middle of the video but one thing that's nice about this is that you can actually change this after the fact so even if you are recording sideways like this there is a way to then after the fact in the settings application or in the photos application change it so i go in here let's go into our photos as you can see the video is taken in portrait mode but what you can do is go into edit find the area where you do make that switch over so if i long press you can see the arrow i switch it over to landscape i'm in landscape mode i can then clip it we'll press done i'm going to save that video go back to it go into the crop section and then i can rotate it so i can rotate it 90 degrees a bunch of times and now i am in that landscape orientation the way that i wanted it to be from the very beginning so it's easy now to be able to then go from portrait to landscape in the same video after the fact so if you do need to send it to somebody or you need to use it in landscape orientation you now can another one that i wanted to show off is again natively in the photos application some of these things apple just doesn't talk about and they're so useful so for instance here's a picture of my daughter in the back seat what i can do here is actually blur her face so if i press clean up which is normally used to remove things in the background or move something from the for from the foreground. If I just kind of let it prepare for its cleaning, give it a second. But once it's done preparing for cleanup, I'm then able to then kind of isolate her face and it'll blur her face. So now that it's ready to go, again, this is mostly meant to remove things from the background, but if I just kind of circle her face, it'll blur it out and you can see that it blurs out the face with that effect. Another way that this is useful is for license plates, for instance. You can go in into the image of maybe a car that you have, maybe you're selling it on Marketplace or whatever the case may be. You can just do the same thing with a license plate and it'll blur out the license plate. So a lot of sensitive information can be hidden correctly the way that it's supposed to with something like the cleanup feature and it's not just there to remove somebody from a background of a nice picture. Another fun one that I've mentioned before, but I do want to bring up again, is going to be in the clock application. So if we go into the clock, this is actually added with the iOS 26 update or 26.1, I believe. But if you go into an alarm and tap into one, you have the ability to change a snooze duration. So if I go into snooze duration, before it was always defaulted to nine minutes for decades at this point. Now you can go anywhere from one minute to 15 minutes between your alarms snoozing or unsnoozing yourself. So that is something that's brand new and it took, again, over 20 years for that to be a feature. Now some other features, which are features that I remember being kind of important way back in the day, even before iPhones were around, is going to be customizing haptics and vibrations per contact. So if you go into any one of your contacts here and go to edit, you can then scroll down to where it says text tone. Under the text tone, you tap on that and then you're able to create haptics. So haptics are by default. You can change the haptics based on whatever you see fit here. So you have standard, staccato, symphony, or you can create your own custom vibrations where you tap on the screen you know, my dad likes to do the, the SOS knock, so like, dun, 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 dun. Stop it, save it. So now whenever he actually calls me or texts me, that's the tone that I'm going to get. It's going to be that SOS kind of vibration, which is kind of funny. But overall, you can do that on a per contact basis, be able to create a new vibration based on a per contact basis. And another one I wanted to bring up for easier navigation is going to be Again, if you are deep into your settings or into any application that has this back arrow, if you long press on that back arrow, it'll give you a menu of all the different pages that you visited with the most recent one being at the top and the one farthest away from you being at the bottom. So if I tap on settings, it'll bring me all the way back to the settings homepage. So to show that off again, if we go into, let's say accessibility, cause these have a lot of kind of deep layers going to touch, going to haptic touch. If I long press again on this arrow, it'll take me into each one of these right here. We can press settings and it'll take me back to where I was. And the last one I want to share because I've been using this one a lot lately is going to be in the podcast application. So podcasts now have the ability to get transcription done automatically, no matter if the actual podcaster is putting transcriptions in. So if you go into any one, you click on it, this is going to be working better with the more recent uh, podcast episodes of what you're listening to. Go in here, go into the now playing, hit the little captions button on the bottom left hand corner, and then you get the captions. But now, the same way that you would actually share lyrics in Apple Music, if you long press on a section, you can actually share from that moment of the podcast to somebody. So if you want to share this podcast, but a specific moment, because this is a two hour long podcast, share from there, and then I'm able to share it to whoever I see fit, and then they will be brought over to that podcast episode in that exact moment, for you then to be able to see what you're referencing instead of having to scrub through an entire timeline of a two hour podcast episode. But those are some of the things that I wanted to show off when it came to the iPhone. There's a lot of things with iOS 26.2 and just, you know, usability features that I wanted to show off. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. 
Let's finish up. So as you saw, there's a bunch of different features and settings in the iPhone that not a lot of people know about. So hopefully you took at least one new thing out of this video and are able to implement it on your day-to-day -day use with your iPhone. And there's so many more coming down the pipeline, especially with the addition of 26.2 finally coming out to the entire public. So stay tuned for some more videos like this one because we got a lot more coming down the pipeline. And leave a comment down below of your favorite feature that maybe you didn't know about and now you do and you're able to use it and maybe share it amongst your friends. But that'll do for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.